In this video, we're looking at algebraic identities and factors. We're looking here at an example, x squared minus kx plus one is a factor of ax cubed plus bx plus c, and they want us to show that c squared is equal to a times a minus b. Before we start, we must understand what a factor is. A factor is when something divides into another number. So four is a factor of 12, it goes in three times, but the key here is we have a remainder of zero. So we need to remember that that's what a factor means. It divides in and it leaves us with a remainder of zero. So I'm going to divide basically x squared minus kx plus one into ax cubed plus bx plus c. So that's what I'm dividing in. Now you will notice here that I don't have a power of two. And in order to use long division, we must make sure that we count down in our degrees, our powers. So I'm gonna rewrite that as ax cubed, which is as per the question, but I'm gonna put in an x squared now. And the x squared that I'm gonna put in has a zero in front of it, so plus zero x squared. And that's known as a placeholder. I'm holding the place of an x squared. Then going back up, I have my plus bx plus my c. So just make sure that you put in your zero x squared there. Now I'm going to divide. So take your time with it. X squared into ax cubed goes in ax times. I now multiply back down my ax. So ax multiplied by the three terms here. So multiplying it by the x squared gives me um, ax cubed. Multiplying the ax by minus kx gives me minus akx squared. And then ak multiplied by one gives me plus positive one ax. I'm now going to change the signs there. So that becomes a negative, becomes a positive, becomes a negative. Uh, ax cubed minus ax cubed will cancel, so they become zero. Uh, zero plus akx squared leaves me with positive akx squared. So zero plus anything just leaves me with the number. And now I'm on bx minus one ax. Well, I'm gonna do a little bit of rough work over here so you can see what that looks like. So that is bx um, minus one ax. Now I'm gonna factorize out that x, so that's the same as b minus one a all times x. And that's the way I'm gonna write that now. So that's plus uh, b minus one a times x. I'm then gonna bring down my c, my constant. And I'll divide in again a x squared into a k x squared. Well, the x squareds will cancel, so that just leaves me with, on the top, plus uh, a k. And I'm now going to multiply that back down. So a k multiplied by x squared gives me uh, a k x squared. a k multiplied by minus k x is going to give me a negative a k squared x. And then the a k multiplied by the positive one is giving me a positive one a k. I'm now going to cancel them out. So change the signs, minus becomes a plus, plus becomes a minus. a k x squared minus a k x squared will cancel out. And now I'm going on to the sum of, let's write it out here again. Uh, b minus one a x subtract, sorry, it's plus a k squared x. So that's the same as, again, factorize out the x. That's the same as b minus one a plus a k squared x. So I'm just basically, sorry, why am I squaring it? It's multiplied by an x. Again, factorize out the x. So bringing that back over, what's that giving me? So b minus one a plus a k squared, all times x. And then that is plus c minus one a k. Now you can put that in a bracket if you want because that's our constant. So remember, we should have got a remainder of zero. So this is my remainder, but I know because it must be a factor that that must be zero because that's my remainder. So therefore, I'm gonna let that equal to zero. b minus one a plus a k squared, all times x plus c minus a k or one a k must equal to zero. Now I'm gonna call that zero uh, x plus zero. Again, I'm putting in the placeholder because remember we have something x 
is equals to 0x and then I have my constant equals to my constant. So that's why I'm putting in that placeholder of the, uh, the zeros again. So pairing them up, we, we know that b minus 1a plus a k squared all times x is equal to 0x. And we also know that my constant c minus a k is equal to 0. Let's make a little bit of room here. Um, on the left hand side one, I know that they're both something x, so I can divide both sides by x, so I can cancel them out. So I'm leaving myself with b minus 1a plus a k squared is equal to 0. And what I'm going to look at now, if you go back up to the top of the question, the question wants us to be c squared equals a times a minus b. You will notice that there is no k in that. So they're eliminating the k. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the one here on the right, the c minus a k, and I'm going to write that as k is equal to everything else. So I'm going to have it as c is equal to a k. So I've just moved over that negative a k to become a positive. And then I'm going to divide both sides by a. So I'm writing k in terms of c and a. And the reason for that is I'm now going to sub in this c over a for k over here. And you will notice then that I'm writing it then in just of terms of a's and b's. So subbing that in, I get b minus 1a plus a times my k to be squared equals to 0. Subbing in your k, which is c over a. And rules of indices now, just come over to my rough work. What does c over a all to be squared give me? Well, that means I square the top and square the bottom. I square the numerator and the denominator. So therefore, that's giving me b minus 1a plus a all times c squared over a squared equals to 0. Now, that's the same as putting that a over 1, top by top, bottom by bottom. So notice now that that a on the top will cancel with one of the a's on the bottom. So that's leaving me then with b minus 1a plus the a's have cancelled. So c squared over a equals 0. Again, remember that that squared, that second a cancelled with the one on the top. So taking it out of the bracket, b minus 1a plus c squared over a equals to 0. Now I want to get rid of that fraction. I don't want something over a. So to get rid of that uh, denominator, I'm going to multiply across by a. So multiplying across by a will give me a multiplied by b gives me a b. a multiplied by minus 1a will give me minus 1a squared. And a multiplied by c squared will give me a c squared all over a. But those a's will cancel there. And that's equal to 0. Because that's why I'm multiplying across by a to get rid of that fraction. So how will that look? I now have it as a b minus 1a squared equals, uh, sorry, not equals, it's 1a squared plus c squared. I'm forgetting my plus in there. And we're practically on the home stretch. Just look at the question, what way did they want it written again? They wanted it to be c squared equals everything else. So if I have it as c squared isolated on the left, move everything else over to the right hand side. That's going to give me c squared equals moving over the minus 1a b 1a squared gives me positive 1a squared. Moving over the positive a b gives me negative a b. And I can now see that there's a factor common to both of those. There's a factor of a. So if I factorize out the a, it gives me a multiplied by 1a multiplied by a multiplied by b. And that's our answer. That's what they wanted at the top of the question. Write it in the form c squared equals a bracket 1a minus b. So a little bit of advice there is always keep track of the question, what form they wanted it written in, and then you just have to do some manipulation, some kind of advanced algebraic manipulation to get it in that format.